Welcome back everyone, it's the return of the two mats, the good looking one, and me. Um, we've got another episode of the Canary Room with this man here, Mr. Dando, Matt Dando. Matt, as always, it's a pleasure to be in your company and, and in your room again. Um, I think we came just before the start of the show season last year. We caught up with you at Stafford where you had a particularly good show and then we caught up with you a few times during the show season. Um, fair to say, mate, not a bad show season you had. No, it did okay, yeah, yeah. Overall, I think... Um... Uh, there was a couple of best novice um, at council shows, which is brilliant. Um, I did well at, at, at Cleveland. Um, you know, and I think more consistency with specials. I think the year before, um, 10, 12 specials, was nearly 30 specials. So I think the consistency was a lot better. So, yeah, all in all, mate, yeah, really, really pleased. Really There's pleased. The modesty of the man there, I did well at Cleveland. Didn't you win every colour except one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, no, it was great, great show, and, and uh, yeah, great people. It was, it was a really good day. So, um, yeah, that was a great, that was a, that was a standout one. Um, but, but yeah, North Wales was great. One, one best novice in North Wales with a little clear yellow hen. That was brilliant. Um, no, really enjoyed it. It was great, great getting back out and seeing people and catching up with you and, and the guys and, and girls. So, um, yeah, all in all, all in all, I think a, a step, a step in the right direction, which again is, is the important thing for me. Keep, keep progressing and keep, you know, keep. Uh, keep trying to improve and keep developing the stud so yeah good not a bad year good stuff well we are at the beginning of the breeding season we've got lots of chicks we've got um, an egg food recipe that will blow your mind blow your mind so stay tuned for that you know what to do everyone grab yourself a cuppa sit back and as always enjoy the show oh matt you it's fair to say it's uh, it's all systems go in the danto shed isn't it it's like yeah. Well, I wouldn't like to say what it's like on camera. This is a family show, but there's an aw there's an awful lot of um, love in the air. Let's call it love in the air, shall we? Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's been a, it's been a steady start. It's been a steady start. There's, there's plenty of chicks through the room. Um, it's uh, it's that time of year when uh, you need a patient wife or husband or partner because I'm like constantly in the shed first thing and then in at night. So it's a it's a fair bit of work. But um, no, you know, okay. Um, you know, plenty plenty of full eggs. Um, there's plenty of chicks out at different stages you can see around the room. We'll have a look at them in a bit. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, so far, steady, steady start, really. So, and it, and uh, what what a kind of I'm always fascinated when I go to you know rooms, and I've obviously second time I've been here. And um, you've got the you, you're running you're running cocks with with multiple hens. So yeah, you've got essentially a, a cock at the top of the top of the tree yeah. uh, and then beneath that cock you've got sort of four cages of, of, of hens so yeah. in the majority of instances are those cocks covering the four hens below them yeah ideally and well that, that's the way it was planned it, it doesn't always doesn't always go to plan I mean some cocks are run with five or six again it's, that's a lot of work that two weeks of running them in and running them out um, but um, yeah yeah the, the sort of when, when I was setting them out um, the cock birds at the top with, with four hens that I want ideally wanted to run that bird with um, and again like always one or two have had to be swapped out or one or two just don't like each other and scrap one or two hens but with the allies again always a bit more of a challenge with the allies I left the allied it's mainly allied cock birds left them with the hens in like flight cages trying to get used to each other but again a couple of them were having none of it so yeah yeah all, all sort of um, you know Pretty much most of, of the, the, the pairings I wanted, we've, we've, we've done. Um, and then one or two we've sort of moved out. One or two cocks dropped out of condition, so again, a little bit of change in there. But yeah, the, the plan the plan was cock at the top and four hens underneath. So And, and, and to, to be fair, they've, 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 they've filled really. They've done, they've done pretty well um, you know, across the board. But again, I sort of, sometimes I'll leave the cock birds in overnight and I'll, I'll, I'll put them in in the morning maybe before work and then take them out in the afternoon. I sort of, I'm not in the shed all the time enough to sort of constantly run in and run out. Um, so, so yeah, it's, um, but yeah, it, it, it's worked. I've not had any issues. I think that's, that's one of the challenges, isn't it? We talk, talk a lot about the time that we can, you know, spend in the birds. And I, I you know, yeah. I, I don't have the same number. I don't think, honestly, although I probably have actually, if I had everything up in the canary room, I've probably got more. Um, but it is that, it is that sort of, that, you know, you want to go in, you want to, you want to spend time to see the hens. Yeah that are in condition. You want to see the cock birds that are in condition as well. So you do need to commit some time to it. And and I think, um, you know, like you, you know, I've left the bird in overnight occasionally um, just to absolutely make sure. Yeah. Um, 
Have you found that um, the, the hens are, are, are sort of are all coming into condition at a similar time or have you found you, you know the the rows on the cages are they coming into condition at, at different times is it something you've noticed no to be honest a lot of them were, were, were all together really they were a little bit earlier than i wanted we we, we sort of try and get away for jamming the kids away february half term just before it gets manic in here so we had a week away and then um got back and there was a few eggs um on on the floor so um most of them again so, you know one or two a little bit later but, but generally most of them the cotton birds have been okay what i did this year actually was um last year the cocks were a little bit slower than the hens and i, I sort of put it down to the fact that the higher up um it's a little bit darker the way the light is so i actually have installed um leds and actually if i just flick it off you'll see what a difference it makes just to the top cages Oh yeah, it does. Massive, massive difference. I feel, I feel like I've got blind, yeah. everyone. So, so putting putting a row of LEDs just at the top, um, you know, I think uh, I think helps get the cocks cocks sort of bouncing as well. Um, but no, no, most most of them, a few few a little bit slower, and you know, just just at their own time really. But um, I sort of try to um, put them down in batches and then. Um, you know set set them in groups and then i've got if i need to move ticks about i can so i think i put seven or eight hens down and then i put another seven down and then and then um and then and then the the, the um the ones that were left um and again one or two you know there's one or two down the bottom that that, that haven't haven't built there's a, a flighted hen that just wasn't wasn't interested um but most of the others yeah all pretty much at the same time yeah and and with the system the, the sort of cock over multiple hens, you find fertility's not too bad. Yeah, no, it's been good. It's been good again. I sort of kept a lot of um, a lot of young birds, um, a lot of unflighted birds. So you, you, you're never quite sure. And one one or two of them took a little bit of going. And to be honest, that's why um, you know I, I leave them in a little bit longer just to make sure. Um, but no, no, generally, as you can see by the by the number of chicks in the room, it's it's not bad. Not many, not many nests of, of like five. Um, I got you know plenty of nests of five and a couple of couple of sixes last year. There are only threes and fours this year, but um, but plenty of full eggs. So I, I think plenty of clears as well though. Like the allies, yeah, the allies were were a bit more of a challenge. So a lot of the allies have gone back down again now. Um, you know, I put them down. Um, if the eggs are clear after about, you know, I can tell after about, a, well, you can tell after a few, four or five days, but leave them for a week just to make doubly sure. Yeah. and then literally just put the hens in, in one of the longer flight cages give them a week give them loads of baths loads of egg food and then put them straight back in and they've gone down again so there's a couple of allies that had clear rounds that are now sat on full eggs so fingers crossed we can we can get a few allies out as uh, as the next weeks and months go on yeah, yeah. yeah. We keep everything crossed mate we'll keep everything crossed super stuff right so behind us matt we've got um well we've got a number of very nice birds with lots of very nice looking chicks um a couple of things that, that sort of um, immediately sort of spring to mind. Obviously, you've got, we use the same pans, um, so you've got the, the, the front pans, which are, are great for these cages because, you know, the crap falls down off them. Um, yeah. And then I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued because I've got the, um, I've got the, uh, the, the clay pans that I drop my nests down into, but you've got something a little bit different going on there. Yeah, so well, it's all, all it is is a bit of drainage pipe. I just literally drop the pan into a, just cut off a piece of drainage pipe, I don't know, two or three inches, and then um, and then drop it in there, and then put the, put the put a new pan in for the hen. Um, sort of drop, you know, I'll drop them as quickly as I can, really, just to make sure the hen doesn't start plucking them. Um, and also try and do it before the chicks are at that point of rocket launching out all over the place. Uh, once they're down, they can sort of find their way back into the, back into the pan. Um, but yeah, so no, from, from a from a day perspective, yeah. uh, do, do you put a day on it, or is it not dependent really on, depending not on the really. size? Not, of the not really. What are these now? These are 15. What, what day? Four. Uh, they're two two weeks old. Um, so. Um, yeah, just just you know, you know, whenever whenever I sort of thing, I don't I don't look at it and think, well, I'm going to drop them one day, yeah, what, 13, 14, yeah, just just whenever uh, whenever they, they look like they're getting to the point that they're uh, they're about to spring out, yeah, I'll drop them down then, and and depending on the hens and if the hens are looking like some you know some of the hens a bit earlier will will be you know picking material up or you'll see them with nesting material again, so again you want to get the the second nesting as quickly as possible really. Yeah, and you've got little 
little cages. Are these magnetic or do they? No, go no, they, they just they just twist. They, they just little. They, little they just they on. just twist on. Yeah, just just to hold a, a record card on. So again, it, it, it's it's I scribble all over them various things, but it's it's, it's a doctor in real life yeah, when we look at it. When yeah, well, at, you wouldn't understand any of it. The quality of his handwriting. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> um, but but yeah, no. Again, it's it's ma- it's mainly so I know it, 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 the, the 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 set date and the hatch date, and I can keep an eye on that, and then I know when to put put soft food in without messing about and disturbing the hens um, but I'll put on there if there's any chicks move like I moved to cinnamon I know which cinnamon's gone in, I moved a cinnamon into there so if I move any chicks about I can write it on there or move, move any nests so um, yeah I, I just do that and then I, I transfer all the information I, well, I start to do it already but I've got a book that I put the pairs and then I'll, I'll put I, I ring them when the when the when the, when the fledged to be honest I, 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 won't, I don't ring them um, any earlier um, so once they've jumped and they're sort of moving about I'll ring them um, um, and then I write them in the book, and uh, and then it's uh, it's easy to find. And we've got a, a, an, an interesting thing here. So we've got the Unifeed on, yeah. um, which is on all the time. You've got your seed mix on here. You've got soak seed, which yeah. finger draws as, yeah. as frequently as you can get yeah, in the room. as much as possible. Every time I come in, I'll put, put some fresh soak seed in. Um, I don't put this mix of soak seed in with the egg food just because it, it can go off a little bit. So no, just just finger drawers um, as little and often. And then actually as well, I do put a little bit of uni feed in finger drawers as well because they just tend to sort of peck at that as well. Um, just gives them again something else, keep the hens interested. I think that's it with the birds. It's their it's kind of their inquisitive nature, isn't it? Which yeah. which helps yeah. them see. And yeah. you've you've. Th- these here, and I don't know whether this is designed or not, but that actually gives a little bit of coverage as yeah. well to the nest. No, it is. So, it is. Yeah. yeah, absolutely right. It just, just a little bit, of especially when they, when they're, they're laying or when they're building up, and or when, you know, when they, when they're sat on eggs. Um, yeah, it just gives them a little bit of protection. So that's why I put it on the same side um, as the uh, as as the pan. Um, but um, yeah, no, again, just making sure that I know exactly what's what's gone over what and, and, and what belongs to what, and uh, can track it through there in my book because it's easy to lose with sort of thirty hens and you're moving chicks about potentially. It's, it's, easy, it's to, easy, easy to lose track of very, them. As, very easy uh, as, as we as we both know. Yeah, yeah. And and I guess you know there's a, a conversation I've seen on Facebook of late, which is you know to remove the eggs or not remove the eggs is, and I remove them, um, yeah. so I take them away and, and I set them on. You know as soon as you see that blue one laid then yeah. then i'll generally set them what what's yeah. happening in the dando bird room yeah same i'll, I'll, I'll move them but 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 only because I, I, to try and set them in in, in batches yeah. rather than um I, I mean second round a lot of the second <laughs> round last year i just left in i didn't have any problems the, the, the you know the, the hatch within a couple of days of each other so i don't think it's um you know it's not absolutely crucial but i think for for me um Especially when you you know you might have to move birds or do something. I, I just I'll, I'll put put the eggs in the um, in the drawer and then put seven or eight hens down on the same morning and then you've got loads of scope to move birds about. Yeah. Or, you know if hens decide they're not going to feed or you've got lazy feeders, then then you can um, you know you've got plenty of options because there's nothing worse than you can see a hen not doing a job when you've got nothing to um, to foster them under. So so yeah, I'm, I'll, 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 I've done that first round and again we'll see, see how we get on second round and see see what you know the sort of timing. I don't don't leave the eggs out you know if this second round will go a little bit um you know they'll go when they're ready so um maybe not as much second round but um but no same, same as you and then th- this fascinates me there's there's a kind of acid house sticker thing going on here matt <laughs> um, on a number of on a number of the cages so you know yeah. we've seen terry kelly and keith's ferry's peg system yeah and um, you seem to have gone one step further with the acid house stickers. Do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to confess on film what that's all about? Yeah, absolutely nothing at all. <laughs> you know, there's actually, actually it means it means absolutely nothing in terms of at the minute. The the ones on the feeders, I've just not taken them off. Were when I was sorting out the show team, so I knew which birds I was going to show, and I've just not bothered taking them off. Um, so there's a few stickers. Yeah, they, they don't actually. We'll, we'll make we'll make something up. They don't mean they don't actually mean anything. <laughs> and yeah, someone commented saying no, I, they they don't mean. And to, to be honest. Because these cages are plastic, um, I just use a, um, a, a whiteboard um, marker and I sort of write all over them. So when the first chick started hatching out, the early chicks, just so I knew exactly where, without having to sort of move the hens off, I just scribble on the front chick, 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 and then I, you know, the, you know, the, the ring numbers 
um, you know, E for eggs, obviously, when they laid some, when, when I set them. So, again, I, sort of rather than stickers, I'll just I'll scribble all over the cages. Whiteboard markers, everyone. Whiteboard markers. I'll be on Amazon on the way <laughs> on the way back tonight and ordering them. <laughs> a bloody good idea. Well, well done, that man. So, um, you know, we've got to we see some of the hens. We see some of the hens feed, them, and they seem to be Touchwood doing, you know, a, a sterling job. Um, let's let's have a look now at your your egg food recipe, which you're. Um, <laughs> Which he said at the at the outset, you know, there's an egg food recipe here. It's spectacular. Passed through generations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think when you see it, everyone, yeah. you'll agree. So let's take a look now at Matt in his kitchen. My um, my complex secret egg food recipe. So, so as we're saying, I sort of make this um, make it in the morning, um, and then I tend to make another batch in the afternoon as well. So, I'm, uh, so it's always fresh, and it is as easy as this. Some fresh broccoli in there. In go. Peas. Like that. of the ingredients. And now like that. You've got a rinse, pull, my bead, my bite. Um, I sort of make that, I, I put it in to serve the night before, put it in the fridge, and then um, and then it's sort of ready for, for the next day. Put that in there, give that a mix into that. We've um, we've seen the sort of the the egg food mix, Matt. And what fascinated me, I guess, is that you you just blitz the peas up, mate. You didn't yeah. defrost them first. No, no. To be honest, with with the broccoli, it uh, blitzed um, with, with the broccoli. By the time I've put the egg food in and the pearl, the pearl's damp. So again, that it, it's by the time I put it in, it's it's pretty much it's pretty yeah. much defrosted, and, 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 and the, it keeps it cold and fresh as well. So it's yeah, no issues. And the conditioned seed, I think, you know, on the top of do that myself, a little sprinkle of condition on there, that really yeah. helps. And I think yeah. the testament was, as we saw you putting them in to the various different cages, you know, the birds were right on it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and to be honest, Matt, in the past I've put, you know, put all sorts in there, oranges and kiwis and apple and all sorts of stuff. And I don't think they're that interested, to be honest. They like the pearl, they like the soak seed, they'll pick up the broccoli and the pea, um, leave most of the egg food, to be honest, which is the most expensive bit of it. Um, so, yeah, I, I honestly think just by, just by keeping it as simple as possible um, and as fresh as possible, so that mix is that easy rather than making again the old the, the, when I used to do it and put all sorts in I'd make a big batch and I'd freeze some and I'd, um, for me that is just I, I can do that in five minutes in the morning so I make just enough to sort of get you know if, if Gem will feed them at dinner or if I'm about I can feed them at dinner so by tea time I make another fresh batch so it's constantly fresh as well yeah. which I think helps yeah. that just keeps the hens interested because it's always fresh yeah and I think that that sort of little and often I think as a as a as a principle of, of, of feeding particularly in the in the season and it's, it's a good one and then of course you've got the unifeed there as well and we can see here a couple of the hens sort of pecking pecking away at the unifeed on, yeah. on an almost constant basis which is yeah yeah and as I said put that in the fit in, in, in drawers as well they, they'll, they'll, they'll take they'll take the unifeed they sort of switch between and once the egg food's been in for a while they'll then switch to the unifeed and then they'll have the soak seed so I think it's as you as you, you know it's about keeping it keeping the hens interested keeping them constantly going down the more interested they are the, the better they are at feeding yeah. we've got a couple of shots here this is something I've, I've I've seen a picture of Matt do this. It's something I've never done. 
Um, we've got it. It's, it's like the bird whisperer, this fella. So we've got a couple of shots. These these are a couple of um, the, these are about fourteen days old, I think. These chicks yeah. and and you've literally you've got them perching on your finger and you're having a good look at them and you know nice <laughs> ni- nice and steady, which I guess is you know part of the early training. But but what what where where did that come from? I've, I've certainly in the twenty odd years I've never done it. It's, no, to, to be honest, I, I will be doing. But yeah, well I, t- I try not to mess with them too much. And once they get a bit bigger, they, they'll, they'll they'll obviously jump off or they'll fly off. But you know they're they're. Um, as you said, 13, 14 days old. I've just dropped the nest, so they've jumped out the nest. It's the first chance I've had to have a proper look at them. Literally, then was the first first time I've looked at those 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 two or three chicks. So no, I'll just have a quick look, make sure that they're um, that they're okay. Um, again, I've not I've not rung them yet. I'll probably ring them over the next couple of days. I'll probably wait till there's I think there's about four nests that are similar sort of age. I'll wait till they're all out, and then I'll ring them as a as a batch. Um, so yeah, no, no, you, you don't get to do it for long because they start, they start jumping around and flying. Yeah, around. and let me tell you, Matt, you won't be able to do that with the red poles. <laughs> now, I did just say the word red poles because Matt, like many of us, has succumbed to the the, uh, the the joy of, of red poles. You've got a couple of little pairs of poles in the shed as well. Yeah, I thought we'd just throw them in. I, I like them. They're, they're a little bird that, that took my eye at a couple of the, couple of the CBS shows and when they were, I, I saw them on the bench and I thought they were a nice-looking little bird. So I thought I'd just throw a couple of pairs in. Heartache, mate. That's why well, they're well, possibly. To be honest, I'm, I'm under no... You know, if they breed, brilliant. If they don't, I'm, I've... Um, you know, there's nothing lost, but I've just put them in the corner, uh, you know, away, away from the fives. Um, it's quiet. I'm not really interfering with them too much. Just leave them and see what happens. You never know. Watch watch him, watch him breed two dozen of them now. <laughs> be like the Red Bull Diaries will be heartache for me, and Matt will be like, "Oh, look at all these lovely Red Bulls I've bred." <laughs> not, not that he speaks that. So let's let's have a quick look now. I think you've got a, a fawn nest that you wanna you wanna show us first. So let's have a a, a quick look at that. Yeah. Yeah, so this is. I thought I'd just get them out before they uh, start rocket launching all over the all over the shed. That's um, a little nest. There's three fawns um, and a cinnamon in there. They were from the best, um, you know, the, the best pair last year that bred. Um, I got three rounds out of her actually, and they're, they're all fantastic young. So I'm hopeful. Um, you know, there'll be there'll be some nice birds in there. But you can just see the, the cinnamon, the cinnamon at the front there, and then obviously the three fawns. Uh, there's a little cinnamon. Um, yeah, nice nest. So this is a little nest of I think it's clear. I think they're all clears actually. I think one of them might have a little mark. But again, I've not I've not got them out, and they're, they're getting the size now that I don't want them to start springing about. But they're off um, a little clear yellow hen that um, that won at um, won at Walsall actually. There was two sisters, one one at North Wales and one one at Walsall. So they're off um, off off that um, that hen and a. Um, a, a, a 10% buff cock that did really well for me won a couple of specials so I'm, I'm hopeful I'm hopeful there's only three of them in there but um, hopefully they'll, they'll have a bit of quality but we'll we'll find out so um, this um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what what they look like when they jump this is um, a buff carrier cock over a cinnamon hen so we've got um, we've got one visual cinnamon um, at the top and then we've got two look like normal so they could be ca- they could be hens or carrier cocks um, they, they you know both both the parents are really really good birds so you know I can't wait to see what they come out like and there's a, a little foster in there that you can see a little rogue um, clear yellow um, that um, that w- wasn't being fed out of an nest of four so uh, at the time pop, popped it popped it, it in there and uh, it's doing pretty well so um, but yeah that cinnamon looks um, looks nice but again I've not had a chance to, you know, I've not got them out to have a look at them but yeah, nice nest. Yeah, so this is um, this, they, these hatched yesterday, um, and um, these are off. Um, actually, it's a buff carrier cock. I ran the buff carrier cock with um, with with cinnamons, uh, with with two or three cinnamon hens actually, but I did put in with one normal hen. Um, so they'll throw out carriers and normal cocks. So it's not not a pairing I would normally do because you, you can't tell which of the cocks are carriers and which aren't. But um, I just sort of thought they, they were well suited. So yeah, there's there's three there. They're all. You know, there's no visual cinnamons in there, but um, yeah, we'll see what see what they turn out like. So there's three um, three cinnies there. So we've um, we've had a look at some of the young, and they're all. It's always 
I think, I don't know about you, Matt, I think, you know, when you get those first nests, and I, I haven't had any chip out this year yet, I think when you get those first nests, regardless of how long you've been doing it, it, it sort of, you think, oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, yeah. there's an element of relief in it, isn't yeah. there, mate? Well, the, the relief as you get bigger, I, I mean, the first few days when you've seen if the hens feed and are they feeding enough, and, you know, I've had one or two lazy hens this year that, you know, there's some nests that are a little bit behind, and I've had to move a few about, so it's not, it's definitely, it's not been straightforward. There's, all, there's, you know, there's been a few issues, although, although there's some good numbers of chicks, chicks in the room. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's nice, nice to get, get chicks. But I said, once they get to that age that I drop the nest and you sort of know they're almost there, that's the, that's when you sort of like sigh of relief and you know there's, there's nothing going to go wrong at that point, or generally nothing going to go wrong at that point. And the, the nest management approach, we. we had a little look before you saying you know you, you'll scrape the, the, the crap off the side of the nest and yeah. give it a wipe down and just keep that that nest hygienic and, and then one of the things that we'll, we'll, we'll film but it, it's currently out of operation is you've got an egg buddy um which um yeah which is an, a piece of kit i've looked at to be honest a couple of times do you know what i i it's, it's a great bit of kit it's 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 obviously no good for telephone eggs you can tell if an eggs full after four or five days you can you can start to see so it's not for that but once the once you get to um you know once you get to the point the eggs you hatch if for a couple of days they've not they've not chipped out it's really handy to be able to see whether there's still a live chick in there and at the minute i said i, I need to i need to send it back actually because one of the wires has come off uh, hence we were just bobbing a couple of eggs there yeah, trying to so, try so we've see. gone back to the, the traditional method of bobbing <laughs> eggs in, in lukewarm water. Now, this is a method that, um, a couple of things to say to anyone watching the show. Um, there, you want the you want the eggs really, you don't want to leave them in for any length of time. The eggs are porous and you've got to be absolutely super careful on the, the temperature of your water so you want lukewarm water you don't want boiling water obviously because you'll you'll kill what's inside and similarly you don't want to plunge them into ice cold water what we did see though was two of the eggs which you were hoping for yeah two of those eggs wiggle yeah um, yeah so yeah. so that's uh, Ho hopefully and i said it, I'd, I'd moved them they're off a little blue hen and she only laid two eggs i was waiting for the third egg uh it never came and then left them for another couple of days and, and she never laid any any um any more eggs she's down now actually on another i think three or four eggs but i i then decided to throw them under a little cinnamon hen who who um who hadn't laid um but was just sitting she, she didn't lay for me last year i thought i'd give another go this year but she's she's the same again so i put them under her but i didn't scribble the date i, I set them which is the only one i missed and I, I, every, i've got so so i'm not sure when they're due to hatch but i thought they were due with some some nests um earlier this week but um but no they're not out yet but fingers crossed looking at the uh at the bobbin there's a bit of movement so fingers crossed there'll be a couple of blues there we'll keep everything crossed we'll keep everything crossed and i guess finally before we wrap up the show today matt and um, you know the, the the season ahead is fair to say you know good solid start to it for you um are you working to to sort of numbers in mind you're working to a timeline in mind are you working to getting birds off specific pairs is it a combination of all of the above um pro probably all really i think numbers it's, it's quality not quantity i think you've always said that it's, it's always always about about the quality of the young coming out i think it's nice to get a good solid first round in in terms of both numbers and quality um and then second round last year it took a bit of pressure i've bred a lot of birds first round last year and, and there's probably 60 60 chicks in, in the room at the minute and there's probably another i don't know 20 eggs to hatch um you know that's a big first round so second round I don't need to sort of chase the numbers. I'll have a bit of a play about. I might try some birds with with or cock birds with hens that, that that maybe I wouldn't normally, and it just sort of takes a bit of pressure off, really. But um, yeah, a bit of um, a, a bit of everything, really, and 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 try and breed a, a, a you know a spread of, a spread of the colours. Um, if I end up breeding a load of clears, I'll try and breed some cinnamons or some darker birds second round last year it was the opposite i bred a load of darks and no lights so second round I, I sort of bred, you know tried to breed some light birds um so so yeah but fingers crossed get a first, decent first round out of the way and then we can see how we get on for the rest of the rest of the season i think that's that that's always the sort of plan isn't it it's a good solid first round to to get some numbers to get some quality in and then you can you can kind of breathe the sigh of relief i think yeah. a difficult first round obviously you, you yeah, often you feel chasing. like you're chasing yeah. and you and you're playing catch up and and our little grey matters 
tend to play tricks on us then because we're like, oh, I'm having the worst season ever. And then it becomes the worst season ever. Yeah, and I think also trying to get, get them done as quickly as possible. Again, with, with uh, obviously family commitments, young family, get to the summer holidays, the kids will want to do stuff. So, you know, I don't want to be having any chicks in the nest when we start getting to sort of July, August. So, um, you know, I started early March this year. If I can get them, you know, some of them are going on the second round now. We're just building the second round. The sooner I can get, I can get it done and dusted, and then just let them molt out in peace, the better, really. So yeah, t- time-wise, um, you know, I won't have chicks in the nest in in, in sort of you know late late June, July. Um, hopefully, it will be done and done and dusted by then. Well, fingers crossed. Hopefully, it will. It feels like it feels like we should invite ourselves back later in the year, Matt, just to come and see. And um, listen, as always, mate, an absolute pleasure. Good great, to see you. It's looking you looking in. good. And uh, well, I, I'd say best of luck. But you've got you know a really solid start. So let's let's hope that that start continues. And I will look forward to catching up with you later on in the year. Top man. Thanks, mate.